But it's pleasure seeing everybody, especially some of my friends from Montevideo and some of the uh, groups that we've been working on this issue since I was in the State Assembly back when, when we started the resolution, and I had asked the young uh, men who had approached the Miss Robian School and from the community uh, in Montevideo about what do we do to help uh, uh, people understand how important genocide recognition is to us. I said, well, first of all, because right in Montebello at the golf course, there's a monument dedicated to this. And uh, um, I didn't know be truthful very much about a lot of Armenian, Armenia. And, and uh, I still don't profess to know everything, but I know a heck of a lot more. What happened, though, is I had asked the young men, two very energetic young men, was the principal of school, and don't ask me the names because my brain's tired, uh, and the other young man who is a businessman, and I said, well, you go around and you call all your city officials in the surrounding communities. Don't forget Los Angeles. There's 80 some odd cities in the county alone. So you have a lot to choose from. And you tell them that you want to invite them and recognize them at a, an event commemorating the genocide. And you'd like for them to bring a resolution. So sure enough, they worked on it. Let me tell you, the first time we were under a tent, it was freezing cold. And it was a beautiful ceremony, except it's all in Armenian. I'm sitting there for three hours. <laughs> but it was enjoyable in the sense that we were able to see the students participate. The, the people talk with a passion. And even though you did, I didn't understand the language, we understood the emotion. And uh, I've been very much in favor of, we've, we've uh, passed the first resolution at the state level years ago. I've been here 10 years, so it's got to be at least 12 years ago. And uh, I work a lot with uh, Adam Schiff and, of course, uh, Frank Pallone to be able to do it. But since they've taken the lead, I let them take the lead. That's not a problem. I, I don't claim ownership of anything because, uh, as you well know, um, Adam Schiff has the first largest or the largest Armenian population in Los Angeles. I have the second. And so uh, I'm very, very fortunate to have a lot of good friends and supporters from my area. But understand. Uh, Learn, learn, especially young people, politics. Because this is where the buck stops. And if you want to effect change, you have to learn how to play the game, and then you have to learn to get in the game to be more than effective. Uh, that's what got me involved in politics, uh, you know, many, many years ago. I hate to tell you, back in the 80s. And it wasn't something that I elected to do. It wasn't something that I felt the passion for other than serving people. And if you have a passion, then follow it and make sure that you understand that it's got to come from here so that you can speak with the truth. And like the truth shall set you free. And it's one of those things that we've learned here in Congress is you need to call, pick up a phone, talk to your elected representatives at the city, the state, the county, the federal level especially. But you've got to, if you can't get to the member, talk to the staff person and sit down, invite them to your event. Be, show them who you are so that they can begin to understand how it is that you feel that this has to be something that we must take the banner and be able to get this done. Uh, especially those that didn't vote for it. Find out, it's a part of the record. Call them, invite them, send them information about the, the truth and the reality of the matter. Um, Right after I, I came to Congress, the uh, word got around to some of my uh, other constituents on the Turkish side who came and wanted to convince me that it was all a farce, that it was something that was not as painted or as presented. I said, well, then you bring me the information. Let me be the judge. I didn't want to see what you're banking it on because what I have seen, what I have heard, and what I've had, been exposed to tells me this was very real. So weeks later, they come in, and it's a um, two-page printed, uh, or mimeographed, if you will, or, or Xeroxed, or duplicated article. And this was their basis. I said, I'm sorry, but this does not do it. And this is not something that I can take and feel comfortable taking it as truth. This is an article that somebody wrote, apparently, um, calling this event not bogus necessarily, but blown out of proportion. 
And so they never came back to my office, which is okay with me. <laughs> but I, I, I do like to tell, the, and, I, and I ask the tough questions. I don't mind. I, it's one of those things that uh, at my age, you, you don't care. I mean, let the chips fall where they may. I got here, and if, uh, if they want to challenge me, fine. Challenge me. But I'll back it up with whatever I know. And I know this to be a fact and the truth. And that's why I am very, very supportive. I'm continuing to work on this.